<laughs> All right. Now. On. Oh, I have coffee, so I'm good. Yeah, you got coffee. You're good. I got I got a good night's sleep, so I'm pretty excellent. Good for but you. There's plenty of people in the castle that uh, that did not. Not so uh, good. <laughs> but regardless, they are all back at their PCs, and we're going. Wow, we're we're starting already, man. No uh, no time for the early banter. So yeah. it's, uh, it's going straight in. So yeah, it's day straight three. To the point. We had the full 14 hours yesterday. I had a guy uh, come to me in the corridors at the middle of yesterday, going, uh, "So when do we get a, a break and all this?" And I said, "At midnight." <laughs> break. <laughs> yeah. What is a break? Yeah, I what, don't know the concept. <laughs> what, what is a break here? This is why we got teams Doesn't of. Doesn't exist. <laughs> this is why we got teams of three plus, right? You uh, you got to rotate, manage your time, manage your stamina for the game. And uh, a lot of them have managed it really well. Look at this. Europe yes. is just packed tight. I don't think there's a single bit of breathing area for any AIs here. No, I don't here. think so. Uh... Yeah, okay, we have amazing Alenson representing uh, <laughs> AIs in all of Europe. And even the rest of the world is really, really yeah, packed, packed out now. Yes. Holy moly. I have some space there, but... Yeah, there's just a, just a little bit of space that's getting packed up. So this is actually the How final day. How is Australia? Australia is uh, what's in Australia? We, we just don't Someone know. was there. But... There we go. Yeah. There we are. Oh, they've actually formed oh, Australia. Okay. I, I missed that one. Yeah, Australia proper. Australia proper is on the map. Uh, Malaya has demolished poor Lang Shang, yes. and uh, here is the real terror of the East in my book. This is going to be interesting. Oh yeah, Yuan. They've got some really mighty ideas, and they have got no doubt loads of claims on China proper so yes. they could gobble this up and then uh, you know just dictate what happens in the east here in the late game I think we're just waiting for everybody to um, to get refamiliarized with their country and we'll be unpausing very shortly nice. let's get a look at this player wars good look. this is looking good the the first I didn't that see on. that yesterday yeah Prussia we're getting slaughtered here so this is a Saxon reconquest of uh, what's that mm -hmm. I don't know how to say that name. Oh, yeah, again, uh, where I, is it? I'd be offending a lot of people if <laughs> I... Oh, I found it. Here we go. Up Here in, we go. Up in Ripen of Berlin. Okay, sure. Okay. Oh, right, it's, uh, it's Polish Berlin. I see. <laughs> this, is what, this is what they'd be calling it. Yeah. Uh, Jake, mm -hmm. in case you missed it, Grugi ran in here last night just as we had ended the stream. I was like, is there still time to gloat? Is oh. there still time to gloat? And we were like, no, come back tomorrow. But clearly, the rest of the evening has gotten to him. No, I mean, he could be wheeled in in a wheelbarrow, and then he can gloat from there. We'll uh, see what we this, can do. This is Grugi. No, rain, nor sleet, nor hail will stop that man from gloating if it's at all a possibility. Uh, especially uh, the battles are going on like so. Oh, God. Yeah, wait, were the Swiss always involved? Yeah, yes. okay. I'm just imagining things as usual. Uh, <laughs> but the Swiss have been playing incredibly well this whole campaign. They are. They are super good. Uh, Switzerland is not in a good position in 1444. They only have a few provinces. They're pretty gash. Uh, even the defense isn't that great because they only have a couple of mountainous provinces, and I don't even think one of them has a four. Mm. Mm. We changed it all in 130, so I'm trying to remember what it is in in, uh, in 129. You you blink and things change. Yeah, I certainly um, do. But uh, you know, I've always said that Swiss uh, joined late. Oh. Uh -huh. And don't think Saxony counting on them being involved. So Saxony probably not. Saxony thought they would have that was a, a su bad surprise. Saxony thought they'd have a four on two or a four on three, but no, it was four on four. The Swiss came in to balance things out. <laughs> and speaking of out, Norway is. Out. I don't know if they lost anything from it all. Any cores of theirs that are gone? Not that I can see. I can see. But I think uh, they're intact. They made it out intact, but oh, okay. So they have uh, they have lost their alliance mm. with uh, with Saxony. I think it's going to be the end of Saxony, Saxony. today. Then again, oh. we thought the end of Saxony before, didn't we? Yes, and they. They are still here. So, I mean, what were they reduced to earlier on? It was just two, <laughs> maybe three provinces. <laughs> but they made an explosive comeback. And they're not the only ones to make an explosive comeback. Brunswick were just, just <laughs> demolished early on. During the they had nothing. <laughs> uh, they really did. They were down to maybe two, maybe three provinces. It was just the implosion of the North German alliance. Um, and, uh, you know, Silesia and Grugi in particular is just, ah, yes. <laughs> our time to rise. But no, the Germans rose um, back up. And Brittany was reduced to nothing, and now they're Texas. Yeah, I mean, Brittany were just uh, 
Yeah. That's really decent. Ship, almost ship, nothing ship there. Away, but they, they decided to be the um, lone star state. We're going there. Yeah, it's it's a story of five nations in the New World. Texas, Aztec, Genoa, Inca, the Inca and... Uh, the big blob. <laughs> yeah, Inca. Inca's huge. And technologically, it caught oh, up. They were well. able, to, uh, able to reform. Off of Sardinia, Piedmont, who's... Uh, they're full-on kingdom, and they are just taking over... Yeah, what's this land called again? It's, uh, I think it's Brazil. Brazil, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, Pro and there's Portugal there. Proto Brazil. Proto Brazil has arrived as well. We thought Portugal were gone. <laughs> yes. In fact, I'm still convinced they're gone. Where even are they? Okay, so their capital was moved to. Do you know this place? O Orinoco Delta. It's Santo Santo Thomas. Santo Thomas. Colombia. Oh, I don't okay. know. That's, that's all. That's all Colombia or Guiana stuff. Not. Uh, <laughs> Not my area of expertise, not, not, that any, <laughs> not that any of the rest of this is. So it looks like we have peace for our time. Uh, Saxony probably not too happy with the peace deal oh, taken because no. they lost a whole lot of their heartland here. Wurzburg, oh. Jarabrud and Lipsk all fall. Now those must be Polish versions of the names here. Uh, <laughs> Saxony still have more than their lowest point ever in the game. Yeah. But at this, at this late stage in the game, this is a heavy loss for, uh, for them. Yeah. They've kept. Well, they survived. Kept their lives. Good. Netherlands, Hanover, Lubeck. But why did the Netherlands not get involved in the? Or were they involved? Maybe they pieced out very early. Mm. I think they did. Yeah, because that truce already has a bit of time on it. And lots of truce. Yeah. If I if I had to um, just out of the blue blame the Dutch for something here, they probably joined the war and then when you know what, guys, we're not actually interested. In, bye bye. Uh, said goodbye. Not anymore. So when it comes to wars, we have Texas, but they're just cleaning up the natives, I believe. They don't even have full view of, uh, of all this, but yeah, just cleaning up this land. It's the Yeehaw Way. Yuan, Yuan. they are doing explosive growth, no doubt. Look at this. They're going oh, here down. they go. Goblin up Shun. Yes. Yeah, Shun's days are numbered. Uh, they don't have a coalition against that. Okay, they have a lot of tributaries. This is interesting. So Perm, Perm Transoxiana, uh, Japan... Oh. Uh, Ude, Udege? Oh, 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 something happened. Haishi and uh, Wanjo all pay tribute to the uh, to the Wan. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> in exchange for being, uh, I suppose, uh, protected. I'll, I'll leave you alone if you give me money. Yeah. There is a Genoa? Oh, it? yeah. Genoa is here and uh, maybe they're here to just privateer. We'll see what we'll see what they have, right? I'm interested in where the navies are for for Genoa. So they got them sailing around here. What are they doing? Protecting trade? Really? Just protecting? Ivory Coast? Uh, oh my, they've got their heavy fleets just to protect the Caribbean here. Hmm. Um, more protecting trade. Okay, I thought they would be privateering how, rather than protecting trade. How's the trade, trade in this area? I just want to check. Yeah, they're still a private confederacy and the trade Good money here, and mm -hmm. it's Genoa's money. Who do you think is making the most money in the world today? Mm, that's a very good question. Uh, can we see the other trade notes? Sure. Who do you think? Where, where about? Where about do we look? Let's check the European mm -hmm. ones here. Uh, Genoa is not as uh, full of money as it usually as it, is. <laughs> it was before. Uh, Lubeck is making the big money here, and uh, yeah, Lubeck themselves are making cash money. Right there in their favorite node. Constantinople is usually a very rich one, but it's but not this Not time. this case. Oh, it's only 12 ducats there. <laughs> uh, Nothing. Persia is usually a good one, and it is good here. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, 38 is pretty good for an inland. It's uh, Malacca, surely. Ooh, I expected more out of Malacca. <laughs> this is a great one because it's fed by everything around here. Uh, and okay, no, the, the, the hero of the story here, it looks to be, is uh, Lubeck. Lubeck. But well, we can actually check all the trade nodes. Who's got the biggest value? I still think it's going to be Lubeck. Yeah, yes. Lubeck. Jenks. Persia. Then Persia, and then all the uh, rest. They all pale in comparison to Lubeck. With that in mind, do you think Lubeck's making the most money? I'm not sure. Well, we'll find Maybe. out just as soon as we see this war that's happening, because it's the Dutch going for Hamburg. Hamburg yeah. The Netherlands are gunning down Hamburg off of Lubeck. Now, what would oh, drive the Dutch? Let's see to fight their old friends here. Probably the backing of England, I would say. A fairly small war. It's not often that uh, you get a small war between players at this point. Can anything be decided on the seas here, though? We have the uh, the Lubecker Navy with their flagship and good admiral 
trying Good. to take out the Dutch. The Dutch have great ideas for their heavy ships, but they're not but backing no. it up with the leadership or a flagship. Yes. No leader and less ships. Yeah, no, we got. It's not even one made for uh, for fighting, this uh, this Carvel, but they they win there. So Lubeck won on the seas, but I don't think that's going to stop England from ferrying troops over and no. making a war out of this. How do the numbers look? Ooh, ooh, okay. Yeah, the Dutch do certainly outnumber them, so Lubeck yes. is probably scrambling for allies right now. So Lubeck have gotten their armies together, they are merging up with Saxony, and they're probably going to try to dislodge uh, one of these. They're going into uh, Launberg because it's forests, and because they have a fort there, they've got the advantage. Uh, oh my, and yeah, they are cleaning Yikes. up. Oh my days, the English must have seen that, and maybe are starting <laughs> to worry a little bit. Uh, the walls have reached Hamburg is going to fall soon if they don't act on this, but maybe they would prefer to hold out in Launberg. No, they are going in on uh, on Hamburg. We shall see who comes out on top. My goodness, right? <laughs> Lubeck have much better tactics here. I need to check the tech after this. And that discipline, look at that, 133 once nice. versus 115. River crossing for the, uh, the English reinforcements. They're actually giving themselves a disadvantage here. The uh, the numbers we, we just see the difference in losses here. The English are losing so much. So much. No. Oh well, unless the rolls and, go absolutely otherwise. But they need some they backup. Go. Or no, there we go. The English are here sent packing. Sent packing back home. Get to your island. Get to your bye swamp bye. lands. <laughs> Lubeck coming out, of out here. on top. <laughs> nice. Oh. So uh, we got some more inside information. What yes, is it? Yes, there is some information. Uh, last night, Lubeck supposedly paid off some of the Netherlands debt. To get them to join the war against Prussia and Poland. Ooh. So hang on, Lubeck pays Netherlands so that Netherlands would join in the war. Netherlands joined the war, joined the... disappeared, <laughs> and now maybe there's a bit of bad blood. And we'll we'll see about the oath breaking because uh... yes, I, I was thinking about that because if they sealed in the paper something about this paid debt. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be in the wall of shame. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it could be something like, we will join the war, and they go, did they join the war? Well, uh, yes, yes, but mm, <laughs> and they joined the war, so it could be that no oath but, but was broken. In, in cases like that, I think they talk to the game master. And Lubeck, Lubeck must have something incredible to help them still out England. here. Yes. Uh, they've got offensive, offensive. quality, economic. Uh, they've also got... Uh, ooh, movement speed, that's a nice thing. Weapon quality standards for extra discipline, horse artillery for extra artillery combat ability, which wow. is great at uh, this point in the game. Uh, they but, really invested in that. Yeah, but uh, even even so, their discipline was otherworldly. What? Uh, here we Okay, discipline plus 32.5%. Wow. Quality, esprit de corps, blah, da, 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 da. Okay, they got the event, inspirational leader. You see the second from the bottom one there? Yeah. Uh, that's 10% discipline. That is that's huge. That's great. That's because they hired this guy. He's really good at what he does. He adds discipline, and now he just adds mega More discipline. More discipline. <laughs> uh, so they're going in. They're going on full aggression on Den Haag. Uh, and they're going to clean up house, right? There is nothing the Dutch can do against such an onslaught of money-grubbing northern Germans. <laughs> uh, but maybe with enough Englishmen oh? to throw on the front lines, they're able to push them out. Oh, My good, okay. The Dutch, that was not expected. The Dutch owe the English big, big time, time for this. <laughs> oh, Yowza. God. Okay, that, that was a bit of a loss for Lubeck, who are already in debt. They're already mm. in quite a bit of debt. They're probably wondering Saxony. Where are, okay, Saxony was there. Well, hmm. Mm. <laughs> what uh, can they do? <laughs> yeah, well, they, they did what they could there. Maybe they dug too deeply and too greedily. Uh, regardless, though, they're winning, right? If they just hold on, to, hold on to Hamburg and win the battles, they are winning there. But their numbers just got shattered there. It's quite yeah. a bit lower now than the aggressors. They, they are probably, because we're in teams of three or more, and, you know, between them, these guys have six players. Um... They're probably sending out two or three people, like, get the alliances, oh, there. <laughs> promise, promise them what we need, because they, they wouldn't want to lose Hamburg. Yeah, uh, we need it. <laughs> conversely, the Dutch and the British really want Hamburg. It is an estuary, extra trade power. It is also an entrepot, so even more trade power, and that could be further upgraded nice. to a world trade center, uh, like, uh, like Lübeck is, or a world port, since it's coastal. So basically, there's a whole lot of trade power to be had here, 64. Oh. 
if we they go are to, very good position if we look at the trade uh, map this is beautiful. there's like piles of coins <laughs> to show how much relative power there is and uh, I think he's standing on a pile of coins or something here. They could open it up further. Imagine if they mm. were to take all of this, oh, right? They split Lubeck Lord. in half and they just strangle the Lubeck trade, which is Everything. being privateered <laughs> by Tyrone and Munster. <laughs> of course they are. I really want to know what those pirates were paid oh, to, I love uh, them. to get privateering around there. So, I love them so much. <laughs> so the defenders are already deserting. I reckon 50-50, but uh, Hamburg's going to pop in four days. Three, two, one. Mm. Uh, just pretend it popped. Okay, <laughs> now uh, Lubeck's come back. They've got Mecklenburg. They've got Saxony. They're going in for one last hurrah. In fact, they're going in a bit too aggressively. Okay, so... Oh, oh wait, Hamburg. Please. Hamburg, uh, sorry, Hanover has joined in the war there. They have uh, gunned down the reinforcements from England. They're throwing everything oh, no. they can to make oh. sure that Hanover does not fall. But because of the lack of inspiration for the leaders there, they are not <laughs> I saw quite... a zero. Yeah, I saw, I <laughs> saw a zero. It. No, the inspiration is gone. Leader, please. Uh, that's it. Oh, Hamburg is popping. Is Hanover might really, really regret joining in this one. <laughs> I, uh, what did I do? Uh, so I'll be interested to see around November this year, will Norway attack Lubeck and if they do will they do it as part of the Dutch English war or will they strike out on their own uh, oh please 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 excellent all right we're, we're gonna have the interview in the cozy corner that I've really been wanting yes <laughs> we've been wondering here about you, about you. <laughs> okay marriage with England they are cozying up aha uh -huh. They're just waiting. It's April already, so they just have yeah, to wait I, a I few more months. I reckon months. in November they're going to go for something. I, I might be wrong, but uh, it seems poised and ready. Okay, yeah. there are some questions I have regarding uh, a new influx of prosperity and wealth to the <laughs> Irish, and we're going to flip over to Cozy Corner to find out more about that. Good morning. Welcome to the Cozy Corner Saturday edition. I'm here today with a leprechaun. <laughs> Uh, I, I am not sure. You're from uh, which Irish pirate nation are you from, I wonder? So uh, we're the, the brave nation of Munster, but mm -hmm. really we're the United Irish Federation. The United mm -hmm. Irish Federation. So you and Tyrone are... We are inseparable, true ah. Irish brethren. You have been uh, friends from the beginning and the friendship seems to last. It's, heart <laughs> it's a heartwarming story. I, I, for one, am moved to tears. <laughs> so what have you joined us here to tell us today? Um, there is a uh, tangled web of opportunities that uh, presents oneself when you are a, um, a privateer such as oneself. Um, we, uh, we simply are a part of a, a greater force of nature that exists. You know? And there is the weather, there are the winds and the waves, and there are um, those that choose to help redistribute wealth from those that have found themselves with and those that might not necessarily be using it in the greater good of humanity's cause and in the, uh, the so you rearrange and adjust this wrong nature's wrong correct correct that is I understand. simply the role we're playing i understand does does uh, i think that jake has been bubbling with questions here for the irish am i right well um just how just what can you afford when more than half of your income is coming straight from the uh, the Lubeck trade note? <laughs> because at the start of this war, I said, oh, if somebody starts pirating this, they could really ham into it. And then just suddenly, bang, pirates. And I was like, where's this money going? Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. So what have you been affording with this newfound wealth? You know, um, we're, we're simple people. We're simple people. We have needs that need to be met. Um, you know, I would say uh, rum is definitely our, our chief import um, of the Irish uh, Confederation, and um, uh, happiness is our chief export. So, you know, that is uh, what we provide. We go to interesting places, we sample their rum, and uh, I think we've had a few opportunities uh, over, the, over the years to go and meet some very interesting locations. Um, and the province names are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Yarr. Yarr. They're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> very happy. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, we will uh, turn back to the streaming team here. And to the Irish, I can just say top of the morning to Yar. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Top of the morning to you. 
All right, cheers to the cozy corner. We're back here. The Dutch and the English, you know, they, they have got Lubeck on ball and chain here. Oh. Uh, Saxony is still technically in the war. England, <laughs> have finally, England have finally noticed that. But because the Saxon army was trapped up north, uh, they have carte blanche to come in and just put uh, put the wee purple nation under occupation. It's not been uh, a good campaign for purple nations in Europe. What's happening in Switzerland? Uh, Switzerland are not at war. They're not doing much here. Oh, okay. Champagne oh, are Champagne. under occupation. Okay, so Lubeck <laughs> Lubeck have snaked around here. Uh, and they grabbed a few occupations. Nothing. Uh, nothing major. Nothing of consequence. Yeah. The uh, the Netherlands Peace offer offer. White okay, so they just want Saxony out for white peace. They haven't got it yet, but they've certainly got occupations. Hmm. So they don't want to take things from Saxony. They don't want to break want Saxony to, further. Yeah. They just want to destroy, and maybe not even destroy Lubeck. They certainly want this money, though. I can't think of a single greater uh, cause than taking the money out of Lubeck. But maybe we have some other insights from Cozy Corner. It's in oh, it's interview galore around here. <laughs> take it away, guys. Hello again. Hi, I'm guys. Now here with Hannover, who's come to shed some light on the North European situation. Well, um, maybe not light, but even more shadow because, uh, well, we, we, just, we just started and uh, it kind of became a big clusterfuck. And uh, the German Bund uh, is no more. The alliance uh, has run out. So the 50 years have run out. So there is no German Bund anymore. Um, and uh, all the powers in Europe are actually now uh, trying to, to get out land. We are close to absolutism and uh, there is uh, no real threat from, from the Polish-Prussian hordes. So uh, the European powers are now trying to, uh, trying to get the peace out of the land. Trying to stake out a future for yourself and your people in this ravaged land that is what is it i'm a bit curious what the devastation map mode looked like in the northern europe what what is what land are you oh it looks nice though it looks pretty nice unless you're from lubeck <laughs> <laughs> hanover is not from lubeck however you find yourself now a little friendless yes that is true um this is what we realized uh, as well pretty pretty early actually today i think the the game is running for what half an hour now and we basically lost our whole alliance. We, I mean, yesterday uh, we announced this huge coalition against Prussia, which basically fell apart, like it always is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're looking for friends. We're looking for friends. We we made quite a good deal with the uh, with the Dutch, so um, we got Stade there, which is uh, quite nice for us. But uh, oh, we are, they they were supposed to sell it to us at least. Uh, this was my information. I hope that they will still do. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting what will happen now. So uh, either the, the European powers will fight against each other and uh, there will be a lot of blood and lost manpower and uh, surely the hordes and, and even the, the further hordes from Africa and India will come soon and come again. So uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting now. So if there are people out there who also feels lonely and wants a friend, Hanover needs a friend. Come, come to us, come to us. We can, <laughs> we can use every friend possible, wherever you are in the world. Okay. Thank you for coming and back Thanks to the lot, stream guys. team. Okay, cheers. So, yeah, I mean, Hanover, Hanover had a difficult life, but yes. they're still alive, okay? They've been around from the very start. They're still here. And although they just went into a war where things didn't look too great, they're still there, they're still, still alive, there. and apparently brokered a good deal with the Dutch. The Dutch are known for the great deals, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see, see. If, we'll see if they come through with that. We also have a uh, pause going on from T1. Who is it? Oh, that's the Observer. Don't know what they're up to. They're, maybe they're brokering a deal. Oh, well, something broke. <laughs> something broke. <laughs> Lübeck oh. for the English, Holstein and Hamburg for the Dutch. And oh, oh good lord. this is horrible. You know, you know who the real losers in this whole campaign have been? <laughs> it's the Dutch, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Norwegians came, then the Ditmarschen came, Jeez. they rejected Ditmarschen, and then the Lubeck <laughs> came, and they're like, okay, I guess we're oppressed by Northern Germans now. Now they're oppressed by the Swamp Germans, oh, and it's... now the English have arrived. It's like, I feel Jeez. really sorry for the uh, the Danish here. I, I, I don't know if I said Danish when I said Dutch there, whatever. The Danes are the ones I'm really feeling sorry for. So if there are any Danes in chat right now, mm. uh, know that you have my pity. 
just in general. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a... But uh, remember, just carry the spirit of Kami Lawson with you. You'll get through. There's a inside information here that a big war is coming. War is brewing, okay. Because it's relatively peaceful. With this many players, you expect to have like 10 wars going at once. But now it's just Yuan eating up the Chinese. Uh, Punjab. Man, I actually missed the formation of Punjab. Let's have a, have it a look at yesterday. that. was yesterday. Yeah, so Multan. Uh, I, I was suspecting they would go for Delhi, but they've gone full on Punjab. Punjab have better ideas, though. In fact, Punjabi ideas. Look at that morale straight off the bat. Uh, cavalry combat ability, yeah, but they've got discipline going for them to get extra manpower. It's it's pretty hovel. Economically, this is amazing. Goods produced is the single greatest economic idea you could have, and that is my opinion. But it's correct, so uh, don't worry about that. Punjab just gobbling up what they have here, and they are not friends with Vijayanagar. They're not, they're not enemies, they're, they're, but they're not do they friends. Have friends? Mm, oh, Yuan is a pretty good friend to have, oh, so okay. is Nepal. Vijayanagar is with Malaya. Uh, Malaya mm -hmm. is married with Punjab, but not allied. Mm. I reckon we could have a it's complicated it's kind complicated of war around here. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll see what comes of uh, this. We haven't really seen the big Asian player wars other than whatever happened to Langshang. And I missed that, dang it. I, I missed that. I think I was kind of just crashed out and comatose on the sofa downstairs. Uh, and I petting guess. the cats. Yeah, and petting the cats. Oh, yeah. those, uh, those castle cats are pretty great. If you've been on the fence about whether or not you want to attend these kinds of things, let me put you right the way over the fence by saying yeah. they are inundated with cats around this castle. We saw what? Nine yeah, yesterday? Yeah, we, we went out and saw about nine cats prowling and around. And there are more. <laughs> there are more. You, yeah. you, you can feel them watching you, especially when you just like crack open a tin of tuna and they just go... Ah! <laughs> so, oh, I see uh, one cat. Nine. <laughs> right, I wonder if this war is unfolding now because Yuan is in a player war and that is a player war against Persia. It oh. seems that neither have called in allies just yet. Uh, oh, no. oh, right, hold on. Yuan is involved because Transoxiana is yeah. in? This is the Persian purge of Transoxianian yeah, heresy. heresy. Okay, well, it's all heresy here. <laughs> God knows what's happening. Um, but do, 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 do. who is somebody actually playing Transoxiania? Well, it's occupied by Punjab, Punjab already, <laughs> so they're not having a great time. But the, the key factor here is that Yuan and Persia are slugging it out. Are they going to make a bigger deal of that? Will we actually see Yuan troops entering into Persia? Because who's the good money on? Technologically, Persia have tech 17, but 17 isn't that great. It makes your cavalry better, makes supply better. But uh, I think in the grand scheme of things, they won't hit that much harder. Mm -hmm. Yuan's troops are still... Okay, they are just dedicated over in China. Um, but this is Persia's war that they're fighting. Oh, maybe, they? maybe there's an agreement. Yeah, they're fighting two wars. So yeah, so the other war is just against the Chinese. A little bit here. complicated. Shu ah, Abu. this one is small. Yeah, no problem there. But yeah. Persia... And this one just started. They knew Yuan would be involved. Uh, was... Here's the thing. So Transoxenia is a tributary state to Yuan. Mm -hmm. So Yuan was honor bound to defend their tributary. Of course. Will they actually defend them? I'm not so sure because Punjab is eating them. Persia is eating them. I think it's just goodbye. Bye -bye. Still, it's going to get rid of the no man's land between the players in Asia. Like there, there isn't really much no man's land at all yeah. in the world, really. <laughs> the only place that's really of any significance that's, uh, that's no man's land for players for now. for now is in China. You want all these permanent <laughs> oh claims God. over China, <laughs> including over Ming. So, uh, this is going to be although, beautiful. Although they're allied with Nepal, both of them have obvious claims oh. over China. So, we're into a new age. Yeah. What's going on here? We've got the age of absolutism, new, new objectives happening, but most importantly, absolutism has been unlocked. Now, absolutism is something that is coveted in the game. Uh, if we look at it here, uh, the better absolutism you have, the not only the better you fight, but the better you can core and administrate your lands. So I wonder if we have any nations that are poised and ready to just maximize their absolutism as fast as possible. Persia have a massive roof for mm -hmm. it, so if they clamp down on autonomy and the like, they would get it. Oh. Russia can have so much absolutism, it's unreal. 
Um, the English? Yeah, they, well, they, they said no to Parliament, so they can yeah. have whatever they want there. I'm just wondering if anybody has immediately uh, nope. taken steps. No. <laughs> but this is just a cap. This isn't how much they have right now. Yeah. So here we go. Ambrosian Republic's just not an absolute thing. And uh, perhaps even more amusingly, the pirates. Like, what is absolutism <laughs> in a pirate republic? <laughs> nobody, nobody really knows. And they have frequent elections in uh, Tyrone. And oh, what? oh what, what a call to arms against Norway and Netherlands, a defensive war. What? Could it be that somebody has had enough of these pirates? The Norwegian conquest of Ulidua. So Norway, Norway has had enough of these pirates.